That's right, my little taint wagons. It's about time I finally got to watch Deadpool versus Wolverine. Deadpool and Wolverine, whatever the hell it's called. I have been hyped for this since I was a child. Before Ryan Reynolds even had the idea of playing Deadpool, I've been hyped to see Deadpool and Wolverine on screen. I've been a Deadpool fan for as long as I can remember. One of the first comic books I ever got in the mail as a wee wee boy when my wiener wasn't even good enough to get hard yet. I still, still wanted to love Deadpool. I would get that shit in the mail. I read it every single week so when Ryan Reynolds first played Deadpool back in X-Men Origins Wolverine I was very sad I felt like dead he was the perfect casting for Deadpool I felt like he was the perfect de casting for Deadpool when I watched Blade 3 back in the day and even at the beginning of X-Men Origins Wolverine Ryan Reynolds was the perfect Deadpool we knew he was the perfect Deadpool when he finally got his chance at bat and when he quote-unquote leaked his little footage out to the world by leaking he pretty much took his job giant wiener out, slapped it down and said, watch some Canadian power and welcome to the world of Deadpool and we all gushed and broke the goddamn internet and it's all been history from there leading up to this glorious movie that we just received and if there's one thing to boil this movie down is redemption and passion. Redemption and passion are the main themes of this movie not just in terms of storytelling but also in terms of the cast themselves and how the story's structured around these characters that are all played so well. You look at every side character in this movie, you know, when it comes to Channing Tatum, Channing Tatum worked his goddamn ass off. I remember when he was announced to be playing in a Gambit movie. I remember there's a lot of naysayers saying Gambit, he was going to be a terrible Gambit. Channing Tatum can't act for shit. All this stuff. And I remember thinking, I don't think you guys understand who Channing Tatum is. The, when he was asked to be in 22 Jump Street, the one thing he said was he wasn't funny, but he he worked his ass off for that movie, and every single movie he has ever been in, he has worked his ass off to be as good as he possibly can be in that film. He didn't want to just be the step up guy or the magic mic guy, he wanted more for his career. Did he enjoy those roles? Absolutely, and he worked hard in those roles, but he is somebody I've seen consistently improving in their art, and this role was this finally the peak he got to play. Ever since he was a child, Channing Tatum wanted to play Gambit, and you can see it in his his Creo accent throughout this entire film. He portrayed Gambit to the perfect degree. And it's it's amazing because I see this movie and I saw a lot of people saying there was way too many cameos and stuff. I don't think you understand what a cameo is, really. A cameo is not a side character. It, they aren't they don't affect the plot usually. Now there were cameos in this, like the the uh, Calvarine. The Calvarine was definitely a cameo. That was just an excuse to get Henry Cavill in the movie. But you look at Gambit and Electra and Blade, which we will get to those and Johnny Storm being played by Chris Evans these were actual characters and it was a redemption to their characters in the past the ending on kind of a sour note especially Electra I always really liked Jennifer Gardner I think she is a phenomenal actress I like her and everything and Peppermint she that movie Peppermint is a fantastic film if you haven't shoved Peppermint up your nipples and then shot it out of the tip of your genitalia you have not enjoyed yourself Peppermint is a fantastic film and it's something because she could have been that with Elektra and I think she always had the opportunities but Elektra is one of the worst superhero movies you will ever watch in your entire life and she is actually a pretty phenomenal character in this film I enjoyed every second she was on screen she really embodied it this was her come to form this is the ending her character deserved and when it comes to Chris Evans as the human torch getting to see that obnoxious in your face loudmouth asshole Chris Evans again was refreshing I mean he's been playing Captain America for I don't even know how long now way too long and it's finally nice to see him go back to where I originally saw him as a child the character I loved the best out of that entire cast and crew Chris Evans killed it as the human torch he was funny he was quippy just like he was in the comic books and to see him be that asshole again was super refreshing and it was just like a little turn of pace especially when it's leading in one direction to think he's Captain America and then oh he's the human torch it's just great to see this kind of epitome of Mar or Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe without being Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe because I don't know if you know a bunch about that comic book but Deadpool's big sad boy throughout the whole thing and just kills everybody out of spite he's just like I'm, I'm a creation well I gotta kill everybody I'm not I like Deadpool kills the Marvel Universe but I do think it's a little fucking angry edgy sad boy time
It's also really, really nice to see Blade back. I mean, I what got me into superhero movies, the movie that was like still my on the Mount Rushmore of superhero films is Blade 2. I think Blade 2 is one of the greatest films of all time in terms of vampire movies and in terms of superhero movies. It is just a fucking masterpiece. It is such a good movie. I when I was a kid, I remember being that small child and my dad watched me let me watch Blade when my mom was at home and I was like, oh my gosh, this is that cool thing I get to do and my mom wouldn't let me do it but my dad's gonna let me do it because we're cool like that we're chief and we're bad chief and and i watched it and i remember thinking i was like 10 at the time and i was like dad when i grow up i want to be blade and he's like listen dude blade doesn't exist uh wesley snipes is an actor i'm like oh shit well maybe i just want to be a guy who entertains people but and that's what i'm hopefully doing right here look at that whoa whoa meta humor but I, I remember just loving Blade. He was, like, my thing that got me into, like, darker comic books. I started reading The Punisher, Ghost Rider, and obviously Deadpool was more of a humorous version of these darker take superheroes. And it was one of those things to see uh, Ryan Reynolds back in the day in Blade 3 and how he had to carry that movie to now Blade's in a movie that's mainly a Ryan Reynolds film. But I thought Blade was just a great come to form. Yeah, he wasn't, like, the, the most prevalent of the actors who were the side characters in the ensemble cast that this movie is, but he was an important factor. I mean, the f fact I gotta hear the line, dude, motherfuckers always try to ice skate uphill. Oh, dude, I had to pause the fucking movie, and I'm glad I didn't watch this in theaters. One, I didn't watch it in theaters because I had a baby right at, right before this movie went, and I didn't want to be the dude that brought a newborn into a movie theater. That just wasn't gonna be me. I wasn't gonna be that guy. So I've been patiently, patiently waiting for this shit to hit Disney+. Plus, giving me an excuse to open up that godforsaken app. I mean, why why don't you just combine Hulu and Disney Plus at this point? It's like, why do I have to siphon between two fucking apps, Disney? Get your shit out of the goddamn poop hole, and then put it in your own mouth and figure this stuff out. Make it a, a continuous circulation of just one app. I only need one. Come on, guys. But it was finally hitting Disney Plus, and I, I love that I gotta watch it here, because there were some moments that I actually had to pause and go back and rehear the great lines again. There were some wonderfully timed lines, and and there's even a really cringe ass line that's like a meta joke, and usually I don't go for that. But I'm so sick of the "is he right behind me?" ass humor. It's so annoying in MCU movies. Everything is. It's been a joke for a long time. But there's a joke early on in the film where uh, Wolverine's sitting there, or Deadpool's talking shit about Wolverine, and Wolverine stands up and he's like, "Is he right behind me? Welcome to the MCU." And it's just such a slap in the face to all the MCU humor. This movie is constantly picking apart the MCU. MCU and its problems and spitting in its fucking throat. It's putting it as it's on its knees, grabbing its hair, twisting its head back, and really going for the uvula. I mean, even look at the fact that this movie did a better entourage a multiverse uh, idea than even the multiverse of madness, a movie based around the multiverse. It was such a wasted potential. I mean, they did have, like, that one scene with all those other characters, but they really were just there to die, you know? It just didn't feel like I was actually getting this great D deep dive into the multiverse and seeing all these aspects of a, a universe and this felt like I was pulling into that universe and I was actually getting to see the different parts of at least the, the movie universes that we've gotten I mean the, the glory of this movie the greatness of this movie is the fact that it felt like a comic book, it felt like Deadpool uh, going to find Wolverine through the chaos of the, the universes that have been established by Marvel and falling and finding friends along the way and that's how every comic book goes, I mean I remember reading the end uh, runs of Dable, or Cable and Deadpool, and he, he was running around with this Hydra agent named Bob, and they were going to different uh, aspects of the timeline in different areas of different universes and running into different superheroes, which they would in turn have to fight, and it would be chaos and awful and awesome at the same time, and that's exactly what this film feels like. It never feels like it's just there to egregiously throw these cameos in their, your face. It feels like they were there for a purpose. They were there to move the plot. They're characters in their own right, and not just because like, oh, remember, remember when these guys were a thing? It, it, it's more to add to the story and build to the universe. And that goes back to this movie being about passion, about love for the characters. I mean, obviously Gambit was perfect. There couldn't have been a better Gambit. I've, I, we haven't seen a better Gambit. The last Gambit didn't even have a Creo accent. It was played by that one dipshit from like, uh, John Carter and Marge or whatever that stupid movie is. God, that movie was boring. It was so slow and long. And that actor sucks in everything he's been in.
That was the troglodyte retard who ended up playing Gambit and just did a shit-ass job. At least Ryan Reynolds in X-Men Origins Wolverine was playing Deadpool. He was playing Deadpool and this, the script sucked. The other guy playing Gambit did not play Gambit. He didn't even try. He was just like, I have cards. Woohoo! And then we get to see Channing Tatum, somebody who actually has passion, actually has like love for this character, always wanted to play him. It's been his, pa his dream his whole time in Marvel, uh, his journey with Marvel when it came to Fox and now uh, Disney. He wants to play this character and you could see that on full fucking display. You see stuff like interviews when they're on set and he's like, I just want to keep this costume on forever. I love this. This is my dream. It's a kid living in that reality, but not a kid by the fact that he's like not understanding the character and he's just like playing it to how his kid mind would play it. No, he has passion and he has pride in his work and his job and his art and you can see it in every aspect and that's how this whole movie plays out in terms of a Deadpool story. It feels unhinged. It feels chaotic. It feels like Deadpool isn't the center, but he is the center of the story, like every single Deadpool comic that I've read. He's always the main guy in the comic, but he isn't the main guy. He's the guy that causes chaos along the way. This is this weird chaotic entity that just swims through the Marvel stories that he's in, even the ones that he's mainlining. He is the chaos, and everything else seems to be the, the straight guy. I love the fact that Ryan Reynolds has been able to weave that into this story. Now let's get to Wolverine. Wolverine, though. Wolverine was also an, an interesting thing that I didn't know how they were going to do in this movie, considering Logan ended on such a perfect note. Basically, they, they went through all the universes, and we got to see all the cool Wolverines, uh, the cavalry, and also a lot of Wolverines that weren't uh, taken advantage of throughout comic book history. Some of the favorite ones, the brown and orange suit Wolverine, the Weapon X Wolverine, or whatever his name is, the one without a hand. I really like that 90s styled Wolverine. He looks really cool. I, I never really wanted to see him in a movie. We got to see comic accurate Wolverine, which made him 5'3 again. And I, a lot of people are always mad that Hugh Jackman was Wolverine because he was too tall. But come on, guys, who wants to see a fucking five foot tall guy running around with claws? It would look so awkward when a lot of the heroes are six foot. He would look like Danny DeVito standing next to Arnold Schwarzenegger. And even in the comics, when they say he's 5'3, they'll have him standing face to face with Blade, who's like six foot tall. It, it's always something that is like in the lore, but then even in the drawings of the comic books, they never made him look that short. So I always feel felt that Hugh Jackman was perfect, one, because he embodied the character, two, because the comics really don't give a shit about the accuracy of the height, they just had it from the original, he used to look much smaller, and then throughout time he got bigger in terms of the art style. So to see Midget Wolverine was kind of awesome, but also kind of made me realize that I'm so glad we never got a comic accurate Wolverine. But you go through the little universes because the whole goal is Deadpool is living in the Logan universe and Logan was the the, per the anchor person, the guy that was keeping the timeline going straight. Now that he's dead, everything's running into chaos and that universe is going to die off and they're going to kill it early and Deadpool's going to lose all of his family. So he's trying to do the unselfish thing by saving his universe. So he has to go through all and see all these different Wolverines and he ends up finding the worst one, the one that's given up on everything, the one that's just fucking down and out. He, all the X-Men are dead in his universe and he did nothing to help save them. He's this sad, broken down man. And it's not like Logan broken down. I think there's an interesting dynamic there where it's not the same char character trajectory. Logan was uh, done and worn out because everybody was done and worn out. It was a tired, dead universe. And he was trying to, he had one thing left to protect and that was that little girl. Which she's in the movie... It's great to have uh, the old or uh, this other uh, Logan from a different universe see his impact on another world and see how he can be good like the uh, Logans of these other universes were, these fucking Giga Chads that he never really hit that peak of. And to see his character di dynamic change throughout the story alongside Deadpool, who's the annoying fucking guy that Wolverine always has to deal with in the comics and is annoying in the comics as well. It's fun to see that dynamic on screen and really full embodied and not really take from the other stories in fact build upon them show how the multiverse could work by not by also saying the multiverse is kind of stupid i loved every aspect of this character dynamic i love the fact that hugh jackman got to play a different beaten down Wolverine that he had really hasn't gotten to play before in the same like he did in Logan but not to the same extent I really like the character transformation for Logan in and of himself in this story because how are you going to do a redemption story revolving around Deadpool and all these other characters that really not never got their true rendition in the sunlight because of how Fox handled the IP or how, because they were never actually gotten a chance to be made into a movie or but because they uh, Wesley Snipes went to jail and they were never 
able to make Blade 4. There's all these like moving parts that made these other uh, en enterprises die out. And this is their their swan song. This is their fucking last stand. This is their redemption. And to have a another Wolverine story uh, revolving around redemption in the background of this to mirror and strengthen their stories at the same time, I thought was a beautiful idea and really, really cool in how it was funct or how it was done and how it all ended out. Also seeing the Deadpool core, awesome. Awesome. I mean, it was cool to watch Deadpool and Wolverine just kill a bunch of Deadpools. That was awesome. I loved it. Hey, I love uh, uh, Girl Pool, who's hot as fuck. It's Ryan Reynolds' wife. We all know that. But everything about this, all the action set pieces, uh, the big Fox logo in the ground, everything about this movie from scene to scene was perfect. It was just absolutely perfect. I'm gushing the fuck over this. I really am. This is everything I wanted from it. It was nice to see Blade again. It was nice to see uh, Channing Tatum as Gambit. I mean, Deadpool just really having his swan song, this really fucking epic uh, uh, beatdown showdown in a very Deadpool way where it's like, yeah, the multiverse exists, but it's fucking stupid. And I'm going to show you why it's stupid because I have a better understanding of what audience wants than you do, Disney. And the fact that Kevin Feige and them actually had the, the, the willingness to step back to be like, yeah, Marvel's in chaos right now. And I know everybody loves Deadpool, so the fact that he fought to get this third Deadpool installment with Wolverine, and it just worked in such a great way, while mirroring the stupidity that is the Marvel Universe, it was perfect. It's just perfect. I fucking love this movie. I, I This is my favorite of the three Deadpool movies, and I like all of them. There's a couple things that I was a little bit sad on that I wish that would have been in there. I don't know how they would have put them in, but one would have been Cable. I would have liked to see Cable again. It just... Deadpool and Cable is just such a great dynamic. I thought Josh Berlin was a fantastic Cable. It would have been nice to see him in the movie in some small regard. Also, another thing, the fact that all the Punishers weren't around. Yeah, it's like, what is Thomas Jane doing? Thomas Jane will take literally any role. The dude's worked for the Daily Wire. He is, will take, you offer Thomas Jane a fucking paycheck at this point, he will be there. And, and the fact that Thomas Jane always loved the Punisher role, if you would have said, we are doing the Punisher role, we're going to give him justice, we want you to be in this, even if it's in a small regard, I know Thomas Jane would have said yes. So uh, it kind of sucks, I mean, it worked for that joke of, which Punishers is it? Which Punishers is that rocket launcher? There's been like five of them. And then Wesley Snipes, there's only been one blade and there's only ever going to be one blade. And then shooting the fucking rocket launcher. Great line. Awesome. Amazing. It would have been nice to see just like, I don't know, even a small snippet of like a Punisher dying and it was Thomas Jane. I love Thomas Jane as the Punisher. I, I, I do like the new guy. I think he's fantastic. I've liked him in everything he's ever been in. He's a great actor, but Thomas Jane has a place in my heart. Dolph Lundgren can suck 87 dicks. He was terrible as the Punisher. It was just not good, but Thomas Jane was fantastic in the role. If you haven't seen the short film Dirty Laundry, look it up here on YouTube. It's like 10 minutes. It is one of the best Punisher uh, media things ever put on the internet and I love it to death. But those are my two, like, uh, uh, kind of uh moments. Those are my two sad moments that when I got done with the film, it was like, I, we could have had a Thomas Jane Punisher in this. We could have had more Cable. I don't know how they would have fit in, and that's probably the problem. I know there was a lot of stuff left, of, uh, left on the cutting room, room floor in this film. When it even came to one of Ryan Reynolds' friends, the dude from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the guy he owns the, the Wrexham uh, soccer club with, he, they, they had a scene in this movie and it had to be cut. And that part makes me laugh even harder because there's supposed to be a scene with She-Hulk and there's this huge drama going on where she's trying to sue Marvel and sue Ryan Reynolds for cutting her scene out of the movie because it's sexist and uh, some sort of misogyny and all sorts of bullshit when Ryan Reynolds cut the scene, uh, cut a scene with his own friend out of the film yeah, if your shit isn't working and it doesn't uh, move the plot forward it gets cut. I'm sure that there was a lot more ideas and big moments that could have been uh, added into this film that were just left on the cutting room floor because they didn't flow with the film itself and it didn't work in the greater context i mean the ryan reynolds wasn't gonna sit here and let his baby be fucked off and uh like jerked off in an alleyway really sad with heroin needles in his arm no he wanted this to be like an absolute absolutely epic grand finale type thing perfect trilogy for the deadpool universe and i think that's what it is i think this was the perfect end to the fox universe as is it's just something that i i i liked the fox universe i always did i thought the the daredevil movie was pretty solid 
and I know a lot of people hate the Daredevil movie with Ben Affleck, but the director's cut, the rated R version, is such a fun film. It is like Daredevil and the Crow making a baby, and it feels dark and edgy, and it's perfect, and I love it. It, it just really, really was. It was. I love that movie. I really do. I, I. It holds a place in my heart, no matter how cringe it is, no matter how bad some of the acting is in that movie. I think that it still works, and I had so much fun with it. I mean, the rest in peace, Michael Clark Duncan. He was just such a great kingpin. It was. It, it just everything I film I always really liked. I mean, even the first Fantastic Four movie back in the day was such a fun film. It was so I it, it's it's enjoyable. It's campy. It's cheesy, but it was good in its own regard. It's something I can watch. The only bad part of that movie was the guy who played Doctor uh, Doom from Nip and Tuck was fucking awful in the role. He was awful in the sequel, and I hate what they did to the Galactus. The second movie was garbage, but the first movie just holds a nice place in my heart. I really liked it. I thought it was fun. It, it's there was a lot of stuff like that with Fox, where it was they would get something going and then they would shit it all shit the bed. Kind of what's like what Sony's doing with all of these weird fucking one off. Uh, villains, Spider-Man villain movies that nobody cares about. But it's been a question, you know, it, it, even with all that bad that happened, it's been a question what happens to those universes? Are they fully dead off? And they are, yes, because the MCU, what Paramount did by bringing the MCU in and then selling it to Disney and being this giant monstrosity that it is today, it was this perfect transition piece into saying, this is what we were this is kind of what was left, and we feel like the Fox universe is just kind of left there, dying off, sad. And it was nice to see them kind of pay homage and say, yeah, some of it was bad, but the, the, there was passion there, there was love there. It, it, it just Fox didn't understand how to really let the creative side run things. They, they just keep wanting to push out these shitty movies because they knew that it would print them money. Disregarding the effect it would take on the people who cared about these characters, such as, such as Jennifer Gardner and... Uh, uh, Channing Tatum, uh, Dead, I mean, uh, Ryan Reynolds, all these, I mean, even Hugh Jackman had a couple of stinkers, and I'm sure he didn't look back at those movies and like, yeah, it was great, fucking, I'm glad that I had one of the worst Marvel movies of all time, yeah, it was fun, it was nice to see that they actually got this change, and they got this final fucking epic moment that really solidified them as being better than they, what they were, that was one thing that I really loved about the Spider-Man movie, the third one, where you gotta see uh, Tobey Maguire interact with Andrew Garfield, and and Tom Holland, and Tom Holland uh, was seeing these other two Spider-Man finally get a fill, or fulfill and fix their last shitty movie, and they got this full swan song that they deserved. This is how the multiverse should have been handled from the very beginning. It should have been a way to, to bridge the gaps that has been made throughout the chaos that has been the Marvel Universe since the very beginning. Since Blade 1 hit theaters, it, it's just been hit and miss all over the place, and this is how we could have consolidated it and built upon it, instead of this weird new shit that's all over the place and nobody cares about. They could have been bridging gaps and filling in plot holes, and I, I feel like Deadpool did it best when he said the, the, the universe multiverse sucks, it's bad, it's always been bad, and there's only been a few uh, fucking hits out of the dark that actually worked, and that's Spider-Man in this movie. That's all I gotta say about this, guys. I had so much fun with this film, I've been all over the place, but it was just perfect, it was passionate, I'm bringing passion into the interview, my taint's fucking uh, isn't just a dead spot between my genitalia and butthole. I have grown a new set of genitals. I have a taint genital system now. It is great because of this film. I love you all. Peace. Good night.